All right, welcome back to the Pod Brother Show. We are doing it again one more time. Pod Brother Nation. Pod Brother Nation is all up in the, his, his man, house. It's a beautiful thing, man. You know, I got with me campaign. You yeah. up for campaign? All right, all right, all right. It's Crypto Night campaign. I'm up in here with my main man, the Pod Brother. Sweet. We about to do it one more time. I got, you know who I got, man? Who's that? I got Vinny Favorito gonna be calling in today, man. Any minute. Wait a minute, hold on. That, that's a comedian. That's dude? a comedian, man. At the Flamingo, man. man the we, hey, this dude got posters everywhere, man. He's all over mad Vegas. Funny, dude. He was my roommate in Boston. He scooped me up, uh, put me under his wing, and showed me some Boston love. And we've been brothers ever since. Man. Okay, all right, yeah, because he's been every, like I was looking at him. And people, you know, it's almost like graffiti. I didn't, you know. He's 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 on everything, man. He is on everything, and he's mad funny, dude. I went to a show last night, man. The dude is ridiculously super witty, incredibly creative, um, you know, just fast wit. Uh, I mean, you know, his whole show is basically kind of busting on everybody in the audience, and uh, uh, you know, and every audience is different, which makes this show the most unique show in Las Vegas. Okay, because um, you know. Every audience is different. You don't yes, know who's every in Every audience will be different. You know, I mean, he has a a, a lot of like uh, you know ethnic ethnic themed jokes. So you're always going to have all ethnics in one show, but you're never going to you never know who you're going to get within that ethnicity. Right. So it's really cool and creative and fun to watch, and uh, you know, it's just on point. That's all I'm saying. The dude is funny, funny, funny. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. So now you and I, we basically, we're just going, there's two brothers on a couch talking is the theme of this show. Yeah, just you know, you know, the two hecklers on Sesame Street Yeah. in the balcony. Yeah. This show is two brothers on the couch. Yeah. Just just talking. At, in the Eagle's Nest. We had the Eagle's Nest. We're in the Eagle's Nest. Turnberry. For, for those of you who don't know, you know, I got my little pod brother can here. Let me, let me show you where we are just so that you have an idea. Yeah, we're... Yes, we are. Of where we are. If I untangle my cables here, I don't want to disconnect anything. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, this is, see, this is what I'm talking about. Right there. All right, now, let me just kick it back here to the pod. See, now this is the pod brother camera right here. So, okay. Uh, you know, so I can kind of show you where we are. Yes. And uh, you know, if, we, uh, if they look, if they look out, it's the end of an era. A lot of y'all go think, this, "Oh, this is the Eagle's Nest." So if you look yeah. out this window here, you can see what we see out that window. Right. But they can't they, see that. Look, like, see, see that. And a lot of people like, "Is that the LVH?" Well, it's not the LVH anymore. That is gone. It is now called the Westgate. Westgate, Las Vegas. Yes. There it is. It takes a second for the camera to focus in because of the lighting. Yeah, it has changed. And, yeah, yeah so, and then on this side of the Eagle's Nest, that's the, it's the Riviera. It's the Riviera. Oh, right over there. Okay, this is Vinny right here. Vinny is calling in. Oh, let's talk, let's talk to talk to my guy. Hello, Vinny Favorito. Steve Kimbo, what's up, baby? Man, it's your world, baby. I'm just a squirrel trying to get a nut. I hear you. I hear you. Hey, I'm here with Hi. My, I'm here with my boy campaign. And we're doing a live YouTube right now, and I thought, you know what? I can't do a live YouTube in Vegas unless I pull in my main, my main roomie, my piece. I appreciate that, man. We go back a long way to the roommates back when you were coming in from them cruise ships, and I was, I was coming up in Boston, and then uh, we met. We did that comedy, that comedy thing for a long time, man. And now here we are, years later, reunited in Las Vegas. We was like the Crockett and Tubbs of Boston, man. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. We were like I see you uh, everywhere. Vinny, prostitutes. We were everywhere. Vinny, I see you everywhere. I see your posters everywhere. This campaign. I see your posters everywhere. You you're really doing it real big out here, you know. Uh, I, I was like, you know, I didn't know who you were at first and stuff and then like, you know, I've been hearing, you know, here and there. I haven't had a chance to come and attend the show yet, but everybody that does attend it gives a rave reviews, so you know, I'm going to salute you on that. That's it, man. You're coming in a little breaky on me. I can't barely hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah, and we're 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 talking to you from my iPhone, so we're tapping the iPhone. So he's a little. So that's better. Apparently, you got a little closer to it, which is a good idea. Yeah. Okay. So um, so let's uh let's let's talk about Vinny for a second, man. I went to your show last night, man, and dude, you were you know I've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of your shows, 
But last night, man, was a unique show based on the personality. <laughs> Your show is the most unique show in Vegas because each audience has its own personality. And That's right. you don't know what you're going to get. I mean, you know you're going to get, like, the same, you know, ethnic groups that come in, but you don't know what you're going to get until you get it. And then you got to roll with that, man. And it's, it's, exactly. It's a like pleasure. Some crowds, some crowds, you just, I could drop my keys and they laugh. But other crowds, you got to work a little harder. But that's the huge part of it, man. I don't change what I do. And I deal with whatever elements are funny. Like last night, that, that, this old man is trying to be funny, and he's got a, he's got a dog in a he pocketbook. He had a dog. He had a dog in a pocketbook in the audience, man. Yeah. Like, what the Yeah, hell? and then I realized the woman with him was Asian, and that explained why the dog was there. So, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> You know, when, when, she, when she read the ad that said, dinner and a show. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We just read a whole new twist on it. But it's really funny, because this guy, and I knew, because no one could see his face, he's trying to make comments to me, like, but he's, he's kind of, like, scaring the people around, like, well, why did he say that? And I'm like, he threatened me, but I know he's kidding. And who's the first guy at the end of the show to come up and say, that was a great show. Absolutely. It's always that numb nut. You it's know what I mean? That when guy. I was talking about that when we went to dinner after the show. It's always that guy, man. You know, this But you've done, you, you've come in and done guest spots on my show, man. And, uh, I love you know, show. That my crowds are actually, my crowds are the best crowds. I mean, they are. When you come to the Flamingo, to my show. Now, granted, last night was my last night. I finally, in two years, get the vacation here. So I'll be off till the twenty eighth. But my crowds at the Flamingo, man, they're always they're always really good in their own way. It can start out great, it, it can start out tough, but it don't matter. It all comes around, and people come out. And the beauty part is, as you know, you can get a CD of the show you were at. So here I am ragging on you, and you can you can take that home with you, which is a pretty cool thing, you know. You know, uh, I can be a testament to your show. I have worked. I don't know, maybe hundreds of your shows because we were roommates for almost five right. years. And I have not had one show that was your show that I, I worked with you where it, it, it sucked. Like Yeah, exactly. You know, we, and you know like, and we've done shows together and I'll forget for Mingo back in the day when we were in Boston and Boston back then was the comedy Becca and it was awesome. But we'd go into everybody who had a, a painter's light and a microphone would do a show. So we just shows in some situations, and I took you guys on the road with me, you know, to, to different things around New England, and some which is beautiful, but that's why we're so good. I think guys who worked out of Boston is because we worked every element, Chinese restaurants. In Vermont, I remember the stage was a doorway and, and separating two rooms. You had to keep your foot on a pedal for the microphone to work. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I know it sounds pilgrim, but it was, man, you know? And then you get to some places, and they, oh, yeah, we'll put you up in the cabin, and this, and there's an arm one, you open up, you go, where's the TV? And they're like, oh, no, there's no TV, there's a community TV. And I'm like, are you kidding? You know, I mean, you know, I'm, a, I'm a street kid from Boston. I've never seen this stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, no, I know. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, we've been up against the uh, strangest situations, and I really think it's a testament of why we can go out and handle any type of crowd, because we've seen it all, man. You know, that's what people don't understand. We've seen it all. Well, that's what makes you such a really good comedian, because you're, you know, your tenure involves so many diverse audiences and situations and people that you, you can never be stumped, ever, because... And, that, and that's it. That's what it's all about. And, and, and then when you first... If you haven't heard about me and seen my show before, which I have the most repeat business in the city, uh, you, you'll think in the beginning, oh, this is going to be racial. But you know what? Then they realize, wait a minute, he's, he's bagging on everybody. Everybody, yeah. Too. Everybody's fair yeah. game. Fair and, game. And, and that's why the elements, you, you would just come back. Now, here you are. You would just come back from doing a little tour thing in Alaska. And I mentioned on stage, it was, yeah, my buddy just came back. He just did some stuff the last. Boy, they know when he's outside because you're black. Yeah. It's no bank. You know what I mean? And they know that there he is. There's the visitor. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, it's, it's enjoyable. And like I said, I'm glad I know you're walking back and forth from L.A. to Vegas. But I know that you have a residence here now, too. We're going to do some big things together. And hopefully, we'll have a podcast together where we're really not the 
knock the hell out of the city. You know, uh, there are three comedy milestones in my life that are really huge, and and you were uh, a part of of all of them. You know, number one, when I first moved to Boston, the very first show I ever did was your show. I don't know if you remember that. I do. You know, me and my memory, I remember everything. Plus, I'm the most, I was the most accepting guy back there, too. Because whenever a new guy would come in, people would be jealous. Why are you putting them on? And if I was never that guy, I put everybody on. Because I was always secure at what I was doing. So I was very fair when it came to stuff like that. That's why I, I had a show every night at every major club in Boston. You know what I mean? And every open mic, I had to go through me. And you know what? And that, that really blew me away because before I moved there, you know, rumor has it, you know, you got to work your way in. They're not going to let yeah, outsiders very in. Clicky. Very clicky. Yeah. So I went there with a little bit of, like, chip on my shoulder ready to do some hand-to-hand -hand combat, and you were, like, the first cat I met, and then you put me right up. I was like, this is nowhere close to what they was telling me it was about. But yeah, I, right. I was just lucky. Well, I shielded you. You were my roommate, so right away... I put the word out there, no, he's with me, you know what I mean? Because there were a lot of clickiness. But a lot of the clickiness were guys who came into Boston weren't even from Boston. I used to tell Frank Santarelli, you know, Frank Santarelli, good guy, funny guy. But he would say to me, because I was teaching comedy, and he would say to me, why are you helping these guys? They're going to cost us work. He said, maybe they'll cost you work. You sing show tunes, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool with what I'm doing, you know? And, yeah. and, and, and then even when I was younger, you know, I used to do a bit on uh, uh, this thing about my dog. You know, I, I had a dog, just had to have it. My dad was adamant, walked that dog, he messes in the house, he messed in the house a few times, and he did it again. And my dad, you know, you, you know, when a dog poops in the house, you rub his nose in it. And that, that, that teaches him a lesson. Well, my dad did the other, he rubbed my nose in it. <laughs> now, my, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't poop in the house for a year. But, you know, if I used to do that show, and this, this one comic comes up to me, he goes, uh, oh, it's such a hat bid. But I go, it really happened. I go, well, why am I listening to you? You play a train whistle on stage. You know what I mean? So, it's like, it, 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 it's just, there's so much... There was so much, you know, jealousy and probably if a younger guy came up, like when I started headlining, and then some comics were like losing their minds. And, and I'm like, hey, I'm not the one who books the show, man. Maybe you should work on another half hour because you've been doing the same one for 20 years. And I'm not afraid to say it. You know what I mean? Well, you know. So if you leave me alone, I'll leave you alone. Yeah, and it, it really went a, a long way. I don't, I don't know if I ever told you it. I mean, I might have, but um, it went a long way to have you take me uh, under your wing and 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 be my ambassador because I was able to like really have a much smoother pass a cleaner circumvent because I was Vinny's roommate the word I was out that I was with you but at the same time I I respected you and I I could see that all right anybody that you scoop up they got to come they got to bring it to the table too because you know you, you your filter is is pretty tight your but the bar is high. Yeah on who you take under your wing and who you see has potential. Right, of course, and I, I, I'm about to say that, too. You, you know, I didn't know you, but I took a shot with you, and, but you had talent. And there was another side of you, which today still holds true. No one was more behind the scenes than you, worked harder than you. You're always on your computer. You're always, at, you know, promoting yourself and promoting shows, and, and you were doing things for good causes, like military stuff, and, and you know, and, and I respected that. I, I mean, you were always in your room. I remember you had that, like, draft table set up with your computer on it and all that stuff. And I, me and the computer back then, I didn't, I, I didn't know what you were talking about, you know. And I'm like, yeah, he's in there working. It's like a laboratory in there. <laughs> and, um, but you, you always worked hard. And, and on stage, you held your own, and that's what was important. Boston's a competitive place. And the beauty part about Boston is if the crowd loves you, they love you. But if they hate you, Forget about it. Yeah. You're done. You know what I mean? And you, and you, you got your way through, and you, you made friends, and you, you got respect from other people, and, and now you, you ventured off to do some film stuff and all that, and you broke away. You, have, you owned a couple of comedy clubs that you ran. and But, you know, we choose our paths, and now, like I say, we, we talked about it you know, last night. It all comes around, and now, you, you know, I wanted you to come here, and you're here, and, and I don't say it for no reason. I know that you know, you're a talent and you're creative and you have good ideas and I'm all on board for it. And like I said, we got a special bond because 
we not only were we roommates in Boston, but we were black and Italian roommates, and Boston was a racial place. Yeah, man, it was place. intense. It was intense. But but that also made people kind of respect us that we took on that racial barrier and just said, everyone, screw you. You know, we're funny, and you know, we we're, we're bros, and deal with it. That's you know, it, baby. Say That's what, what you want to say, about. but you know. When 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 Vinny took the stage, you, there was nothing you could say. And when if Kimbrough took the stage with him, there was nothing you could say. I mean, say what you want to say, but you know when it came right. down I to comedy, take, I used to take black comics to South Boston to do shows, which was unheard of. And they would start heckling them and showing their ass. And then I I get right up in the middle of the show. I go, "Want you all to shut the hell up?" I said, "This guy's I mean, a comic. He ventured into this neck of the woods to give you a show. And you know what? It was a whole different respect. Then they all started coming." And that's what I mean. We broke down some walls, and, and that's it. You know, if, if people have that kind of mentality, they shouldn't be at a comedy show as it is. But I took some big chances, man. You know, like the lady, remember, I'm famous for this story. The lady, uh, me and uh, this comic, George McDonald, there were two of them, but the younger George McDonald. And I wouldn't even call myself a headliner, then I started closing shows. So we go to this place down towards the Cape Cod. Cranberry bar. So I right away, it's enticing. I remember that. And and we get there, place is packed. I mean, just packed. And George is on stage, it's a two man show, and the microphone keeps cutting out on him. But there's a woman in the front, drunk in a wheelchair, heckling him ruthlessly. <laughs> Ruthless. I don't remember this. So, anyhow, he does the time. He looks to me like he wants to wrap it up. So I said, Go ahead. I get up there. They finally get the mic kind of straightened out. And uh, I start to do my thing, and uh, right away she asked me, like, oh, listen, we understand you're in a wheelchair. We're just here trying to do a show. Let us do our show, and blah, blah. So I start doing some more, and then she said, ah, you suck. And I go, okay, listen, I, I get it, but just let us finish it. Third time she asked me, I, I took the biggest chance of my life. I said to the crowd, hey, listen, excuse me, I'll be right back. And I went behind this lady, released her brakes. I pulled that wheelchair right through the club, out the front door, <laughs> put her brakes back on, came back inside, locked the door, and the crowd went nuts. And she's knocking on the window. <laughs> and it's the show. Then we get in the car going back, and he goes, how do you think of stuff like that? <laughs> I could have been killed. <laughs> you know, so it's all, it, it, you know, we, we did some fun stuff, but I'm famous for that story, you know. Like, hey, how do you handle it? Take the take the cancer out of the room. Boom. Right. You know, she's in a wheelchair. I'll finish the show by the time she gets back. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, we had some real fun times, man. One one of one of my highlights was when um, you handpicked comedians from Boston to uh, showcase for the comedy stuff. Atlantic City. Atlantic City, and. Uh, I remember, I mean, I think you did that once a year or something like that. And, yeah, uh, I brought a lot of Boston comics into Atlantic City, which got them into Vegas, too. And it was uh, it was me just setting up those Boston showcases, which was great for the club, too, because they, they had this strong show of Boston comics, and it was just one after the other. And I was I emceed it, and, and every, and I think just about every guy got work out of it, and that's what it was all about, you know, and... But guys back there, they forget about stuff like that. You know what I mean? All the good I never forgot that, on. man. Because, first of all, you know, the, the AC audiences are hard. That was yeah. no layup. I mean, you had to, right. you, you you know, they were they were like a little bit disgruntled. They lost the rent money. They got some passes. Yeah. Some of them were just yeah. like, you know, it was a hardcore audience. And, and plus you get the Philly people come in and they're tough just like they are sports fans. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if you're Italian, they love you right away. Yeah. But most guys did, like I say, great. Because that's that's when you prove, hey, you can't come there and do regional stuff about back home. You know, no. that's when you learn. You got you got to fit into whatever elements in front of you. And yeah. just like Vegas, I work Vegas every night of my life. And the crowds are from every walk of life around the world, around the country. And, you know, you got to find a common denominator for everybody. And that's the trick to what we do. You know what I mean? And that's what helped me out uh, was the cruises. Because every seven days, you got 4,000 people from all over the world, and you have to, you got to be able to touch them all. Exactly. And same exactly. thing with the college tours. So, you know, it was one of those things where I pulled from that experience 
to for that showcase. And I don't know if you put a little extra word in for me, um, you know, after it was all said and done. But I think out of that group, I was the only one that moved on and and, and got booked in Vegas. Yeah, well, they were, uh, you know, like I said, there are other guys that moved on too. But I did that thing, like I say, once a year. I've been in this great show. And I just try to help these Boston guys who were just like in the humdrum thing of just going to the local clubs because that, that was the problem in Boston. There was so much work. You didn't have to go on the road. But I would say to these guys, you're not going to get any stronger if you stay here. That's you true. Gotta, you got to make some moves. And a lot of guys did, but some guys just weren't moving. And they had never worked in Atlantic City. They never worked Vegas. So I, when I put my stamp on them, I was letting them know, I, I know you can do it. So, boom, I'd bring them out there and, We'd have a great time during the show, after the show, on the way to the show. I mean, it was, it was just a lot of fun, you know? You know? And, uh, and you know, we, we had a lot of talent to show out of Boston. I was glad that you were part of that because, like I said, you're a funny guy. You're, uh, you know, it, it kind of breaks my heart a little bit that you broke off from stand-up because, you, you, you know, and I know you do dabble with it here and there, but you, you're not doing it as much because you're more dedicated to film stuff right now and all that. And uh, I just think you got to come back and really stay strong with it. And uh, I think we, you, as you know, we have a couple of irons in the fire. And uh, hopefully we can just break up something big here for the public. Yeah, and I plan on doing that, Vinny. I only took a stand-up hiatus to get my podcast network and technology and research and development off the ground. And, uh, right. you know, because you know how it is with comedy, man. Once, <coughs> once you stop, you know, working, your revenue stop, too. So exactly, I just yeah. I you know we we all know that drill you know as soon as you stop doing shows your money stops so with this new technology with streaming and podcasting and uh, all this social media stuff um, you know I'm basically kind of taking a a page from Kevin books from Kevin Smith's book of podcasting he's got like four million subscribers you know doing five dollars a month or something like that and he doesn't have to leave his house. So, right. you know, yeah. yes. although I do enjoy the live audience and I plan on doing that when I get back and my podcast network and system is up, you know, the live is what's going to drive more subscriber bases to the podcast. So it's kind of one supports right. the other. But right now, I'm really focused on getting my technology tight and getting all the streaming tight. YouTube is now live, so we can do live shows and um, you know, so I will be back. It's awesome. I, I will it's be awesome. back. My stand can, everybody, can, everybody, can everybody see me right now? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have your uh, YouTube channel up, so they can see a picture of you. No, I was kidding. I was kidding. And I have your, um, I have your listen, poster. Man, I love you to death, bro. And, and like I say, I want to be part of this podcast a lot more. And you're doing great things. And everybody out there, let me tell you something. Nobody knows this guy better than me. I know him, I know his family, I know everything. And he's a talent, he's strong, he's got, he's a, he's a great producer, he's a great uh, comic when he applies himself to that. And uh, uh, I just don't think anybody, you know, not too many people work as hard as you do on a stage and off the stage. And that, that, you know, that shows a lot of heart, and that's why I always have faith in you, you know? Well, I appreciate that, Vinny. I, I love you forever. We, we... We brothers from another mother, but I think we got the same blood, cut from the same cloth, and it's, it's, well, it's well, always a pleasure. First time I'm going to fight you, are black. <laughs> <laughs> you see how I set him up? I see. I know how to set Vinny up. I know how to set him up. He's, he's like, you know, you, you know, you got to leave. You know, you got to leave, and you got to pick up and pretend you're cleaning if somebody, if the family comes out. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Steve, I love you, and thanks for having me on the show, man. All right, man, let's do this again on a regular basis because we got lots you of stories. Got it, bro. And, you uh, got it, bro. You got it. I need some tickets to the show. Now, you're on vacation now, but tell us where we can yeah, see you. Yeah, well, last night was my last show till the 28th, so I'm really excited. You know, I haven't had a vacation in two years, and I'm going to enjoy my wife and kids and just going to flop around and uh, play it by ear and just have some fun, you know? Yeah, good for you. You deserve it, man. Thank you, brother. I love you, Steve. Thanks for having me on, buddy. Love you, too, Vinny. Vinny Favorito at the Flamingo. Man. Man, funny, funny. He's already dude, funny, man. man. I'm, I can't wait to go see him. Thanks, bro. Bye. All right, buddy. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I'm definitely going to go and go see that brother right there. Yeah, man. He's no joke. You know, I got a clip of him on YouTube.
Um, so let's just run that just so run the clip. for those of you who don't know who he is and run what the he's clip. about, let's just run a YouTube clip of Vinny doing his thing. Um, Let's do that right now. About California, though, man, it's really ethnic out there, like it is where I'm from in Boston. Like they have the Mexicans there. Any Mexican Mexican people here? Any Mexicans? Give me a minute. Here they come. Okay. <laughs> it always takes a second. Every what do you think? I'm immigration or something? Like, don't do it, Mijo. It's a trick. I like the Mexicans as long as you're not in a moving vehicle. It's all right with me, man. We don't have Mexicans where I'm from in Boston. We have Puerto Rican people. And I like Puerto Rican people, but how much can you do to a Toyota Corolla? I've never seen anything like it in my life. They lower these cars to the ground, then they paint them like banana yellow. Then they put Porsche mirrors on it. Yeah, that's a Porsche. And here's something the Puerto Ricans do where I'm from. I swear to God, they put decals of Jesus Christ on both their headlights. That's screwed up when I'm driving home with a buzz on. Jesus is coming this way. And he's got a twin brother. It's a lot shorter than I thought he was. But see, man, this is why I like doing comedy, because we live in a screwed up world, man, but not in a comedy club. Look around you. Right now you have all walks of life sitting in the same room right next to each other. Everyone's getting along, no problems. Because racism exists in this country, and I'm sick of it. But I think the problem is like the slangs we have for each other. Like me, I'm Italian. They'll call me a guinea or a dago or a wop. Mexicans, what do they call you? Bean or a wetback. Asian people, goo, kuchink. Black people we call, you know, black people. <laughs> did, did you see the white people? They're like, where's he going with that one? There's going to be trouble. But see, the white people don't understand. Blacks and Italians, we get along, right? Yeah, because you work for us. Tell these people country, man, all the ethnic backgrounds and shit. That's what makes us so great and so strong. That really does. Like, any Native American people have any chance? Native Americans? Any? No? I like the Native Americans, but that's what they want to be called, Native Americans, which kind of screws it up for the kids. Want to go outside and play cowboys and Native Americans? Oh. <laughs> Patrick, where are you from, Patrick? Oh, so you're not getting the jokes at all. How are you laughing? <laughs> Uh, Vinny Favorito, my yeah. man. Yeah. Funny dude, though. Funny, yeah, I, I, funny, I'm funny dude. Peep him out. I, I really, I really want to go uh, peep uh, uh, him out at the show and see what's really going on. Oh, we we moving the cameras around. Yeah, okay. well, I want to make sure we get campaign on a full shot, man. Yeah. Full, full frontal. Full it's frontal been a rough exposure. night. It's been a rough night. I know I'm looking rough right now. It's been extremely rough. Uh, Last couple, I mean, we've been doing podcasts after podcasts. We've been doing like marathon podcasts, and, and, man. You know, and then we, you're doing your thing. You know, I'm out here with Michelle Minks, and you know, man, it's, it's just, it's just. You, we, you, you had, shit. you had to get up at like five o'clock in the morning for a sunset photo shoot or a sunrise photo shoot. Sunrise photo shoot. And then the sun didn't even come out. Yeah, that's wrong. So, so do you know what Michelle did? She what? said, "Let's go run the stairs." So, we ran the stairs and stuff because you know I, she's like we gotta do our cardio every morning. So we just knocked out the cardio. So, good, yeah. good for you, man. Yeah, you know, but I got asthma, you know. And I and I got a I got a trick I got an arthritic hip, so you know. But I do no like, asthma in my hip, man. Yeah. We ain't trying to do no cardio. Well, I, I I just you know I'm trying to you know upgrade. Life is 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 about um, you know becoming a better human being for me, anyways. You know, so. You know, uh, I'm trying to become better, like health-wise and stuff. I'm drinking my shakes, you know, and yeah, just drinking my shakes. Just trying to, just trying to live life like, like, like a lot better than, than I was previously. And let me tell you what something that enhanced my life: zombie blast. Zombie blast, <laughs> yes. Zombie blast. <laughs> yeah. zombie blast has enhanced my life because every time I'm feeling down. Take me a blast of that zombie blast. 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 You know, Sarah, take it straight to the head. Shotgun shot to the head. <laughs> Shotgun shells to the head right here. Zombie blast. And that's how you wake up right there. Yeah. You like how I led off into that? Son? I did. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's how I'm a natural at this. 
You, 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 you are. You are. I want you to put on your Alaska hat, though. Oh, you know what? It's yeah. right there. Hold it's on. Right. Let me, let me, let me, you let know, because like, <laughs> I, I really want to hit this. It's right there. Oh, we, that's, I get, we, I, there, there you go. Oh, here, here we go. Okay. Because like, people got to appreciate that right there. Man. I'm going to leave the tag on, too, man. Leave the tag on. Man, yeah, that's... I, I want one. Now I got to go all the way to Alaska to go I'm going to make sure one. you get one, because I'm going to make some... Uh, uh, some I did a pod, pod brother bear yeah. hats. Yeah. Oh yeah. That okay. right there is. Here we go. Black. Are you ready? Yeah. Drum roll, please. Ta da! So you gotta tilt your head that, that, just a little bit. Tilt your head down just a little bit so we can see. Yeah. See this? What is that? A uh, raccoon or something? <laughs> 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 is that a real animal? It's from Alaska, so I'm assuming you know, that it's, it's real. It's it's synthetic, but you could you could if you want to probably have get some real bear fur, but yeah. it's gonna be hot because right. the bear, you know, it could be uh you know because like the way it was you know it was all like kind of matted and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> some Sasquatch uh, armpits. Yeah, this I'm gonna, wear, I'm gonna wear my bear hat whenever I do my, um, you know, my I did a pod because I, you know, I I, 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 I set up an I did a pod for the I did a rod, and that's pretty smart, huh? Yes. So I even oh. I even grabbed the domain name I did a pod dot com. Yeah, are we going up there for it? When is the race? The race is in March, and yes, we are going up there to cover it. Is there a lot of snow? It's gotta be snow because because. Oh yeah, no, there's uh, snow. There's okay, snow up there on. in March for sure. Let me re I gotta I gotta replan my whole thing. I gotta go up there. I gotta be prepared. I got to have because I don't like the cold. I mean, I got to have like certain types of gloves and jackets. Oh yeah, yeah, we are gonna have all that. But as a matter of fact, I'm gonna do a whole line of I did a pond winter wear. Okay. As part of my merchandising. I I, I want to get um I want to see if they'll let me bring. Uh, some of the pit bulls up there, and I want to see if I can have it. I'm sure it's so serious yeah. about that. You know, Susan was cracking up she, when when she when we played. She played back the YouTube channel, and we went on in that little comedy bit about like <laughs> pit bulls. But I'm being pit serious. Pit bull sled team and poodles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Poodles with the uh, rainbow yeah. afros. Right. I, I need you to do that. And, you know, with the Jericho, we all frozen. So you have a frozen Jericho. So <laughs> it's all wind frozen. It's all. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got the pit bulls and stuff. Yeah, that's you know hysterical. They need to do that. You know, <laughs> just come up there and bring them some flavor up. There. Just bring up some flavor. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, you're supposed to haul something in your sled and stuff. I'm yeah. just gonna bring up there. I'm gonna bring her some, uh, some, uh, some hot sauce from out here and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because they probably don't have that good hot sauce up there. No, they they don't. But they do have some salmon. And by the way, the salmon will be here on Tuesday. So we got to have us a salmon party. Yeah, we got to have a salmon party somewhere. A salmon party shoot. <laughs> We're going to do a photo shoot, eat salmon after the shoot. So, um, you know, I was talking to some of the mushers at the I Did a Ride since we're talking about, like, pit bull, pit bull dog yes. sled team. Yes. Um, you know, you have to have a personal relationship with each one of your dogs. You know that. Right, I, yeah, I've read that book. Remember that book you make you read in, in school and stuff? Oh, man, I forgot what it was. But the man, the, the dog and stuff. And it, anyways, yeah, go ahead. But I, I, that's, how I, that's where I get my, my references from. Um, I read a lot. But I get my references from that. When you say, say anything about that I did write, I read a book about it. And, like, the person and the, the relationship they had with their dog and the dog. But the dog was a beast. Was breaking stuff. Oh, man, it was all types of stuff. You know, they... Um they have a lot of YouTube videos of the Iditarod, so you know that's a good place where you can go and and, and kind of like it's a quick learn on what the Iditarod is about because it's it's all about you know the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> How about no seriously though let's 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 create our own like version of it though, but out here you know what I'm saying like like in the in the you know like get us. Skateboards, skateboards should, and dogs. Skateboards I, I, and dogs. I think it should tour. It should tour different countries and different lands, but use different animals. Yeah, but use the because you know some animals. You bring the dogs here, they gonna get. Well, you know, you, we could do like the, eat the dogs. The, the African I did a ride with elephants. 
of zebras. You know, you got to go catch you a couple of zebras. So, you know, zebras is a lot faster than what people think. You know, <laughs> some zebras are, yeah. I think that would be good. Different places. What would you do in um in Russia? Do they got anything? What do they got out there? I don't know. In Russia, the way they have kittens, there would be a kitten I did a ride. Yeah. Cat. There'd be a cat I did a ride in Russia. Cat I did a ride. Yeah. It'd be vodka and pussy I did a ride. The 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 pussy vodka I did a ride and is it's what that kittens. Means. So, kittens. As, as in pussy cat. Right. I, I, trust me, I was there. It's a PG show, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're stupid. Yeah. Yeah. But I really I like like I said, you know, uh I want to reiterate that I do enjoy you coming out, man, and you know sharing the whole new experience and the technology, and you know we're gonna, you know, everything that you know, anything I can open up and and help you, you know, get and make this bigger. That's my mission right now. Uh, besides, you know, Michelle Minks and you know Super Beast Management Protocol Five Body by J. You know, like those are my main parts. And now I have. This, you know, and I can't wait to, uh, you know, really get out here and help you push it. And Tiva Parks, we'll maybe we'll get a podcast with with Tiva um, before you you uh, leave. Uh, yeah, get us a podcast with Tiva. You know that would be awesome because she's on point. She's all about it. Oh yeah, she's she, she's with the business. She's been around. She's been around a bit. Yes, in a good way. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> you know, I'm I, I'm excited. To uh, do some work with her, and yes. I would, I would yeah. love that, to. That, that's that's a done deal. That's, I'm already, excited. Already made that happen. That, that's a done deal. Because we, uh, you know, we, 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 we kind of had like a little bonding moment. To, like we had like a TV production behind the scenes technical bonding. I, I was there for it. I was in there yeah. when I didn't understand what y'all was talking about. I was already knowing that that's y'all was talking. Yeah. About the whole video production lingo, and everything that goes into that. Yeah. The word from hell is render. Yeah, rendering. Rendering yeah. is brutal. Yeah, I'm still waiting for a video to render from like three years ago. <laughs> and and the bar is only like a ten percent. Right, you know, because you got so to have the right equipment. If you don't have the right equipment, yeah, your kids will be out of college with a PhD by the time it's done rendering. Right, you that's know, how long yeah, it takes. Rendering um, takes a very long time, most of the time. If you don't know what you're doing, but if you got people that know what they're doing, it takes half the time. Yeah. So um, we were going to talk about. Um, LeBron James today, and uh, are we still going to do that, or you want to save I mean, that for another time? We can say it, but, but let's 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 just keep it with it because we don't know. Everybody's waiting for the decision, right? They don't know where he's going to go. Let's just, let's just talk about it right now, okay? Yeah, I, let's. What about the wish list? Where would you like to see LeBron go? You know, well, I'm a, I'm a Laker fan, okay. I I, I don't I don't know. And like if he would actually fit in over there, because like don't just think because LeBron is coming that you got an automatic win. As you can see, you know what I'm saying they lost. You know what I'm saying like you can't. It, it's all about chemistry. It's about all about teamwork and stuff. So what was wrong? What was off about them? You know what I'm saying this year that they couldn't go and win it again. There was there was you had the same people. No, why couldn't you go win it again? What was off? You know what I'm saying. What you know, was off? it's. You know the the whole paradigm of the NBA league is all about like moving players around and trades and free agent and switching. Used to be in the old day, you could you could sign up a player for life, right? And those days are like Cal Ripken will probably be the last person ever to play on one team his whole life. He's got the consecutive games, consecutive hit in games for for the same team. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he was a he was a lifetimer on one team. We'll never ever see that again. Like Derek Jeter is retiring after this year. He's probably by like the last team lifer dudes. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's um the concept of team. You know, like I guess team means as long as you're in the league, it don't matter. You know, everybody's you know trying to get their bread. You know, I, and I. Well, it is a profession. Yes, and and you know it's it's about making money and it's yes. entertainment. Yes. So you know, and I'm not I'm not mad at him. You know, no, not at all. Me, I'm a I'm a fan of, like I'm a Laker fan. There's certain players that I'm still a fan of. You know, what I'm saying I, I'm a fan of uh, LeBron. I respect you know I respect his game and stuff. You know, 
respect Kobe's game, you know. Uh, football, you know, I'm a Raider fan. Like, you know, a lot of people don't like the Raiders and stuff like that, but I, I'm a fan of them. There's a lot of players that I, I, I like that are – I'm a fan of the game itself, you know. But, I mean, like, if you make me choose, I'm going to ride with the Raiders. You mm-hmm. know? That, that's me. Well, you know, sometimes your fan – even though you are a fan for life with some teams, you still have evolution of creating uh, fanaticalness for new teams. Like, for example, with me, you know, born in Chicago, the Bears. Right. And then, you know, when, when Walter Payton in the fridge and, oh, yeah. and uh, Jim McMahon and the, the music video right, and right, all that right, back right, in the right, day, right, right. Yeah. you know, I was all up in it, right. you know. And, uh, you know, but then I moved to New York, I moved to Boston, and I, was, I became a Patriot fan, and I met Rob Witherspoon, who was a running back, and, uh, and had a, a serious appreciation for the Patriots. Uh, I was living with Vinny, and we were doing all these fun comedy fundraisers, and a lot of Patriot right. players were there, and, and the Patriot fever, and you get caught right, up in that, right. you know, and you. so and, and game day, all the sports bars, and all your fans, and, and uh, so I became, you know, a, a Patriot fan from the five years of being there, and then when I moved to New York, you can't help but get into a New York team, you know, so I had to roll with the Giants, mm-hmm. and that was when, um, 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 man, he's on, he's on the morning show with Kelly uh, Ripken, I, I'm, 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 um, man, it's on the tip of my tongue. Boy, you're talking about with the gap too. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And I met him personally at the, they did the giant show. Stram. Stram, yes. Man, I, I, I said that name a thousand times, and then I'm, I'm I'm live, and I can't even think of it. Yeah. But, um, you know, watching him play and that whole team, and they finally, you know, were able to get a Super Bowl, that was, like, that was cool. So you kind of, like, evolve into other teams that you – you like, and um, so as that happens, you kind of like to see different players kind of moving around sometimes, you know, move around the league. Right. Well, I, I'm all for anything that makes anything better, you know. So maybe this will make the league better. It's just like, like who knows what's going to ultimately happen with you know the Clippers, you know, that whole situation. <clears throat> but whatever it does to, to make them better, you know, like they, they needed that to happen. Mm-hmm. That whole bad situation had to happen for them to get better. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, you saw the, the, the T-shirts that they have now called the Forgiven. Cleveland Browns is, like, pushing a bunch of T-shirts. just says Forgiven on it. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I think they're trying to push to get LeBron back or either make money on T-shirts either way. Yeah, it's all you about know, the money. It's, it's all about the coin. Wow. Yeah, so, I don't know, I'd like to see LeBron go to New York, just to the Knicks. You see, there you go. There you go. <laughs> there you, go. <laughs> you know, I, you know, you know, I'd you know, like I, to see Anthony Carmelo stay and then LeBron play with Anthony in, in, in the garden. That's just my own personal fantasy. Okay, yeah, we, okay, you know <laughs> Me myself, I, you know, I really don't, you don't care. Like, like you know, I, like I said, I respect LeBron. I respect his game. You know, I respect, you know, I, I respect that. So wherever he he goes, you know, what I'm saying, I'm still gonna be, a, I'm still gonna be a fan of LeBron. You know, what I'm mm-hmm. saying, I, I don't really, you know, LeBron, he, he's he's um he's 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 just that guy. You know, what I'm saying, you know, uh, Kobe. You know, uh, I, I'm hoping that. Everything is all right with with, with 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 him, and they get him a little help, and it's rap. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, wait till the mama. If the mama is still striking, is he supposed to be striking? <laughs> oh man, this all the crack. This all the crack. Well, you know, I mean, you saw the uh, the USA Today site I pulled up about the LeBron Drake. Right. So I, I'm going to be watching all the sites and Sports Illustrated and CNN and. And USA Today, and just see what's 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 going to break on that, because the whole the whole country, the whole world, who's in the basketball is right. kind of sitting on the edge of the seat, wanting yeah. to know what's what's going to happen with that. Because this just starts a ripple effect in a lot of other things, a lot of other decisions. As soon as he decides, a whole bunch of trading is going to happen after that. Well, that's uh, you know th- that's part of what makes it exciting. 
you know, because <clears throat> anybody who's putting together their, you know, their kind of stats for the season right. are waiting to see what's going to happen with those trades and who's going where and who's doing what. And, and uh, you know, that's, that's what it's all about, really. Well, like I said, brother, uh, I just appreciate you always coming through, you know, and we get to do uh, uh, a, lot of, a lot of things, you know, um, and, and this is just the beginning. You know, we're going to take this technology and and all I can say is because I know you're so much like me, expect the unexpected, okay? Yeah. With the pod, brother. And you just don't know what we're going to You don't know, with, but who's going to be on. Yeah, just always pay attention. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you guys get a chance, like, you know, go back and check it out because everything will be archived. You never know where this is going to go to, but it's always going to be something different. Different types. Of, I mean, like last night. I mean, we got to talk to an individual that you know the Queen of England has written. You know, three letters. Three letters for you know what I'm saying. Come on, cool? you know, like that. That's the type of things that you know Michelle makes. She's been here, you know, and you know when um as soon as like, we we stay at breast of the fashion. As soon as uh uh uh, uh Lady J comes back here, we're gonna have her with the body by J. You know, she's up in Canada right now. You know, we got uh. We should I'll, have her. We should have her do a call in too. Oh, you know what? I'll call her and I'll and I'll make that happen. I'll make that happen. Because you know, we support her hundred percent. Right. So we should, you know, I'll make that happen for we you. We should. We Ding. should. That is done. That is done, sir. I'll make that happen for you. We should definitely give her a call and have her on the show. We could pull up her website. She could even Skype in or Facetime in or. Yeah, or, you know, I'm, I'm make that and, and you know, because I got some other, I got some other people too that we, uh, you know, um, uh, my guy uh, in Switzerland, uh, Kareem, uh -huh. he uh, musician out there. He had came to Vegas, helped do a couple, put a couple photo shoots together for him. And he's back there in um, in uh, Switzerland, and uh, he also has technology and stuff. Right, you know, you know, you're a beast when the people from EP, uh, who who made the the MP3 format. When they are getting ready to approve what you what you've done technically, you know he has this new program and somebody I'll let I'll let him tell you about it and stuff. You know, like I know well, I want to do a technical section, you okay. know, a segment where we bring on, you know, guests that are basically talking about, you know, some technology stuff. Okay, because you, you know, know I got to check out. I, I know you do. I know you do. I, I got an app that's supposed to be. I'm I know you do. We can talk call. about apps. We can talk about gadgets. We can talk about hardware, software. We can talk about websites, social right. media. Right. You know, the cutting edge of what's happening in social media on the technical side of right. things. Yeah, I, I totally want to do a segment on that. Right. And then, I want, and then of course, I want you to get together with my guy, Jay Sharp, because you already did some of Man, I and, like and, Jay and, Sharp. And, and, Jay. I, and I want you all to do like a whole little music thing where... We can bring like some of the independent artists and stuff yeah. that he's playing on there. Yeah. Bring them, interview them, music playing, all that other stuff. You know, just you know, combine it all. And you know what else I'd like to do? What's that? A YouTube music video of the week kind of thing, where we go on YouTube and we find like just YouTube music videos that we like. Okay. And we pull them on, and then we just see if we can reach out to them, see if we can all contact right. them. We should do that with SoundCloud too. We should. The SoundCloud, man. I'm watching people. Yeah. I watch people post something, and the ones that are popular, you can actually watch it grow in front of your very eyes. I mean, I see. I seen this one guy that they posted the song, and their fan base was so strong. Within, within six hours, they had like nine thousand plays. You wow. know what I'm saying? Just in six hours and stuff. Wow. You know, like nine thousand people. Their fan base, fan base wasn't that much. Like, man, I, I gotta listen to them. You know, and those are the people that need. A, a, an opportunity like this, you yeah. know what I'm saying? They're right on the cusp and stuff, and maybe we can get in touch with them. We should people do that. on YouTube, and we should you do know, that, and like Skype yeah. them in, and you know, that would be fun. I will make that happen too, sir. Let's do. Let's do that, man. Okay. Let's have some fun, and I'm, you know, I'm gonna do an Alaska segment with the, uh, you know, the I did a pod, yeah. pod brother. I'm going to the I did a cup. I need to go up there and go. You know, she got some pizza. And, and a coffee. Oh yeah, you know, when that salmon come, man, we about to do this. Man, I'm so serious. You it's think supposed I'm to be here on Tuesday? If the salmon be here on Tuesday, I'm trying to be like, what, what are we going? Like, I, I might have. I have to find us a place where we are gonna go and do it right. I don't know. We, maybe we could go with Ricks, man. Man, let's get because we can go over there, salmon it up, 
and, and Adriana and do a podcast from there. Adriana, Live. she can cook some of the salmon because yeah. she do the cooking show. Show, she does a cooking show. She can have her cook the salmon on the cooking show. Huh? We can go live with campaign at there the grill Come on, with the man. pie, brother. Come on, man. That's it right there, man. Busting it for the I did a cup. Right. Just, we can, just like and we, that. And we can have, I can have Jay Sharp coming. He's been, he's been up there to break out. Have him come. And he could be music. doing some, yeah, just he could be doing nice some live music. music. Stuff. And we could step in and do some interviews man, on his. There we go. Man, we got yeah. it down. All right. All right. So, listen, we're going to roll. Um, right. It is the Pod Brother right here with the, the Pod Brother. Pod very Nation, awesome. Kryptonite campaign. Funny. You already know. Kryptonite campaign. You know what time it is. Uh, I, I am, you know, all this talk about food and salmon, man. I'm going to have to go and get me, like, just a piece of salmon someplace, man, because my mouth is watering right now. Well, I got you know me. I got to go take Michelle to a uh, photo shoot. And I wish I was coming. Because that would be fun to watch. We we need to do a podcast yes. on her photo shoot. Set that up. Can you set that up? I will up? make that happen, sir. All right. This is the pod, brother. I'm with Kryptonite Campaign. Uh, you are watching the I Did a Pod with the pod, brother, straight from Alaska with the I Did a Cup bear hat. And uh, we had a lot of fun. Yes, Thank you, Vinny Favorito, for coming on and sharing Man, your Vinny, comedy and your love. Coming to see Big your up. show. Flamingo in Vegas at the Bugsy Siegel Theater seven days a week. Um, funny, 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 bro. So we are out. I'm gonna leave you with a little, with a little music, cause that's what we do. Turn it up.